standard is uh, yes, concerning also with the twenty project because the idea we have is to find uh, points of reference, governance and common understanding and all about to this proposal, try to link universities with non academic non academic <coughs> institutions. We are now presenting some of the activities the working group is developing right now. Uh, trying also to explain uh, how at the moment we are trying to connect the universities with the real world in different settings. Uh, at the moment we have already presented the transnational internship program for some years of the uh, that is both for students and it was presented in February and has been accepted now in many parts of the country to present the project. We have seven countries and nine different countries. Uh, afterwards, uh, we are trying now, we have Mr. Pepe Soledad, uh, trying to, to launch a project about the information system and job opportunities in order to share and distribute information between private institutions and private opportunities across Europe for public administration students. So, uh, we give the user question and concern to this, to uh, placement, to soccer place exchange, and then the last part from some international networks. So we will be very grateful if we will be back with the webinar of the project, trying to find the common point of our project. Well, concerning the transnational networks, uh, in another application, we will try to present in another application next October the proposal to create a transnational network linking academic and non academic institutions. The objective of the such transnational network is to build knowledge in a specific domain at the regional and or sectoral level to share experience and to foster innovation and professional training by bringing together experts or organizations to specialize in a particular field. At the moment, my colleagues will explain later a little bit deeper. The target groups uh, we have set are local governments and future governments of governments. Uh, what is a just national network? What do we mean by just national network? <coughs> And the Renato Davids program has a measure of Congress National Network, which supports the activities of multiplayer professional training networks, bringing together in the member state, at the regional or sectoral level, the public and private players concerned. The aims of these activities are to pour knowledge in a, in a specific area of vocational training at regional or sectoral level by bringing together experts or organizations specialized the particular field of study. Second, to identify trends and skill requirements in this area and include the anticipated benefit of vocational training initiatives. Third, to disseminate the results of the work undertaken by the transnational network to the relevant channel so as to promote greater innovation and transnational cooperation with vocational training. The we are now established that programs will be given to transnational network projects that involve a variety of players from different backgrounds, including political and institutional decision makers. They all contributing to the process objectives and ensuring the durability of the partnership. Uh, the network undertakes three parts. Uh, first, assembling the students on building a European expertise and innovative approach. Second, improving the analysis and simplification of professional skill requirements. And third, disseminating the network's output and quality results to the union and the provide outcomes. The principle of the implementation of this measure, defined as a community level, are first establishing a vocational training network between multiple players by bringing together the participating countries at the regional or sectoral level, the public and private players concerned. Second, carry out the work program on a given subject. This principle implies that the community finance support for the implementation of the work program and related activities rather for the existence of the network itself. Third, ensuring that activities of the network are not confined to the contractual period only. And that uh, outside each network should foresee a strategy to allow its activities to be continued beyond the period financed by the community. The proposals will also include the provision based on the initial results for a building of the network, accompanied by a plan for the financing of the self Well, this is more or less what the established national network means. And 
steps in Thailand to prepare a big proposal that will be presented next October. And today we are trying on you to see if this proposal is possible, if we have some commitment with the project, and with the ideas, if we have a work or not. So this one is the idea. Okay. We started the, the first step towards to make something like a list of possible uh, professional groups or job or, or, or positions that would be uh, better for us in terms of preparing a, a proposal. Uh, we have a, a list, a paper, something like six or seven professional target groups. We can direct it. <coughs> This first list of professional groups were discussed in the brief with some colleagues in my department and also outside my department, uh, the professors of other universities. Uh, we choose these, these uh, specific groups because of different reasons. Some of them because they are growing in numbers and quantities, and others because they are becoming more important every day. And other because it is in common problems north, west, uh, and the Mediterranean area, northern part, every part of Europe. So we can pick up uh, these rules. The second movement was to present this type of ideas of transnational networks and also the, the list of the groups which were previously in a meeting that took place in the brief. Uh, in the meeting of the links with the professional group, we're discussing a, a project that uh, taking profit of it, that meeting. And suddenly we realized that the idea of course of Palazzo, uh, people, some, some people who start getting more receptive to these ideas, so that, okay, let's go on with the step, next step. The next step was in the, in the meeting of the steering committee that took place in Copenhagen. Generally, and then the same was the people, and they realized that it was impossible to go with a project with a lot of professional groups, and that it would be nice to concentrate on one of the groups. And they decided that the better for us would be perhaps local government employees and also um, managers that are especially dedicated to the governmental programs. Different okay. um, Nonetheless, I, I try to explain the business that I uh, We have also think about professional or quasi governmental organizations, could be another, another possibility. We are growing in number, at least in the south part of Spain. They play an important role emerging policies and emerging issues, that's important for us. They have a, an important intermediating role between society and public administration and institutions. And this is nice because they, they help to integrate demands to distributing services and, uh, and also is a, a type of institutional setting position that enhances participation and other values of the government. Uh, people who work in independent agencies have a possibility. They are also growing in number. They are very powerful people, to tell the truth, because they control the regulatory processes and important uh, processes in every policy area. And I think with in that kind of institutional setting, things like control and accountability is at stake to control these agencies and perhaps. We have to say something like this. Um, other possibility is the policy specialist, maybe a specialist, because, okay, we have similar situation every place, everywhere, north, south, west, east. Uh, they have similar needs in every country, or specific specific situations. We are responsible for policy implementation, so it's important to concept of them for us. 
And we have a special problem that perhaps we can say. We have to match the management side of their professional career with the specialized side of their professional career. So, connect these two, the proper manners, and we have some things to say. We also were thinking about journalists, okay, so that's very common, but journalists and people, public employees who work in public institutions that are completely related to mass media. Because, uh, as you know, they create opinion, they transmit messages and create values of public administration, of policies, of institutions, and so on. So, it's a special group, it's not really a group, it's the opposition, but they have a big influence in the perceptions of, of institutions, as I have said, and uh, so they are related with transparency, with control of government, and so on. And as uh, the, the difference between public and private institutions is growing, maybe due to the public management initiatives, also privatization, partnerships, and nothing else, and so on. We were thinking also that people who work in private companies, the companies with most of their business has to do in relation to public administration, now another the opposition is important for us in terms of breaking with this issue. The ethical questions are at the stake with, with the people and also how to fill the confidence gap in terms of public institutions uh, to share ideas, values, and so on in, in the global provision of funds. But finally, as I said, in the Copenhagen meeting, we decided it would be better to concentrate in local government and also in the governmental government. The reasons are a lot, but to, to say only the understanding of features. Okay, we all have local government, so the next we want to make a project. Uh, the agenda of problems in local government is quite similar in the way the funding problem, uh, pressure of finance, the problem of career of people, mobility, and so forth. We have a common agenda, I think. Also, the role of cities and municipalities is growing in the provision and distribution of public services and has to do with our attention, with the national transnational policies, policies and in local terms. Also, this is an average of information uh, for the group, we have some initial ideas to start with in the other uh, one. We can start, for example, creating a data bank on existing information and training initiatives, specifically targeted to local managers. We can do something like an expert report on local managers' information training needs. We can make something like provision of technical support for the future creation a European network of local public managers. Uh, we can design and implement a training seminar, some training seminars on project management and education initiatives at the local level, or perhaps designing a methodology for assessing the degree of Europeanization of local managers. And the other group is governmental. We have also a lot of reasons. Perhaps only to design for the products and activities we have in mind. In the identification of standing governmental programs that include a relevant European dimension, the creation of a data bank of intergovernmental management initiatives, design and implementation of a survey research project focused on intergovernmental manager training and identification of the automatic needs. And finally, perhaps the evaluation of an inventory of innovative concepts and best, best practices in the governmental level. Okay, at the beginning, the next step has to be creating some like steering group. People interested in that idea. With the information we collect today, the opinion that the speakers have in mind, uh, <coughs> we 
we have a compromise which is free. We might have a paper, we have a proposal. The draft will be, will be discussed in September, in the next meeting of the Commission of the University of Group. And we finish the proposal, we can apply the So again, thank you. Okay. I will share with you an experience I've had over the last 10 years or so in uh, linking two transnational networks. Um, it's a story, it's an experience that in many aspects uh, shows how much we can gain from each other, the, our world and the professional world. But on the other hand, it also shows, I think, some of the limitations. Um, and maybe some of your ideas, I I'm, I'm, I'm think I'm going to play some sort of a mad spoiler here. Some of your ideas may maybe be beyond those limits. But that's something we can discuss later. Um, we're talking about two uh, European networks. Uh, the first network is UTT, which is the uh, French acronym for the Association of European City Managers. It was founded in 1990, started out with five members, I think they have 11 members today. Um, they have a Congress, Congress every second year typically attended by some 300, 400 city managers from all over Europe, or mainly from the member states, of course. And they have a system where their chairmanship rotates every second year. Next year, it is probably a Dane who takes over. This is important because when Udita gets a new chairman, this new chairman is looking for something to do and we can help chairman of UDITA. I'll get back to that. You can, you can, uh, you can read more about UDITA on the uh, website UDITA.org. Uh, the other network I'm talking about is the one we initiated in 94. We call it the Eurolog Network. Originally, we were 12... Uh, political science public, depart public administration departments from 12 countries. Now I think we are close to 25 members from 15, 16 countries. They include, if you start up in the north, Bergen, uh, Oslo, Gothenburg, Umeå, Obo in Finland, Odense, Aarhus Den in Denmark, uh, uh, Salford, Strathclyde, Cork, Leuven, Leiden, Bordeaux, Madrid, Barcelona, Florence, Stuttgart, and five more, something, something like that. Uh, it's a very loose network. We have no statutes, no budget, no leadership, but it seems to work. The, the only obligation you, uh, you uh, take upon you if you are a member is that once every 20 years or so you uh, will arrange a summer school in local government studies for graduate students but mainly for PhD students. We, are, uh, we will be running the eighth summer school this year in Cork in Ireland. Uh, they had about 50 applicants and will uh, will uh, accept or have accepted about 30. 
many of whom comes from, come from uh, Eastern Europe. There has been a tremendous change over the eight years we have conducted summer schools from mainly Western Europe dominated by the northern countries, North European countries, and nowadays it's much more east and much more south uh, in Europe. One of the aims of the network also is to foster comparative research in local government studies and to develop links between teachers and, and students. Comparative research, the, we have conducted one research project in a very close collaboration with UDIDA and UDIDA's member organization, that is the National Associations of City Managers. And the next one is on the way uh, within the Eurolog network, which is a study of mayors in Europe, conducted or, or directed by Annick Magnier from uh, Florence, but she has collected a group of researchers from the from the network. I think they cover around 10 countries nowadays. We had some, if you look back in Denmark at least, we had some very bad relations with the profession. Uh, actually we had no relations at all if you go back to the 70s and 80s. But starting in the beginning of the 90s, I think we, we uh, gradually over a few years developed a uh, a close cooperation, uh, a close cooperative relationship. Um, and at some point in 93, 94, I think, we started to discuss, was that something we could extend to other countries in Europe? And through the Danish Association of City Managers, we managed to convince the Udita Board of Directors to conduct or let us conduct with their endorsement a study of their members in, actually we ended up with city managers in 15 countries in Europe. That study was initiated in 94, 95 and um, was, it was conducted by teams in 15 countries. Uh, we made a preliminary report based on our collection of data back in 96 at one of the UDITA conferences. Uh, have published a number of articles, many national reports and three books. So you could say that aspect of our relationship I think has been a success. It's because this was really a win-win deal. Much more win-win than we had originally planned because there was a lot of positive side effects of this cooperation. First of all, we offered Udita a label, or actually, rather we offered that we would use their name in our study. That was very important for them. So we called the study the Udita Leadership Study. cost us nothing, but symbolically that was very important for UDD because they needed to be identified as a European organization at that point. Still need, I think. We gave them work, we gave them our time, we gave them, we, we provided resources, raised money for this project in each country, uh, had very little for the, for the network but managed to collect or, to, or gather co resources for meeting also. We offered them legitimacy, meaning and mission. We more or less arranged one of their congresses, offered them knowledge of course. I can come back to that later if you want to. And then we offered them, and that was really a positive side effect seen from their point of view, we offered them or gave them the idea that there is a certain way to do things. So our study was just the first study among a series of studies. And if you go into their, network, uh, their website, you'll see that there is a study almost done almost every year 
of all sorts of as covering all sorts of aspects um, concerning local government and local uh, city managers. Then we offered them a follow-up, and I'll come, that, that is where the big fiasco comes in. I'll come back to that follow-up. What they offered us, what we got from them was access to city managers. We got their endorsement. We got 4,000, between four and 5,000 city managers in Europe to respond to our very, very thick questionnaire. We got response rates that were far beyond response rates we were used to. We also gained legitimacy or strengthened our legitimacy in this group. I think they were rather skeptical. Many of them were rather skeptical from the beginning. But once they saw what we did with the study, what we were able to say with the study, I think we, they accepted uh, accepted us as a partner they could work with, as a group of people who could say something that was important for them and interesting for them. And then if we go back to the Danish context, uh, which was partly an outgrowth, outgrowth of this international uh, cooperation, there was a number of activities. Uh, we have today something called the Leadership Academy that was set up by the Danish Association where we have close links between the Academy which is a sort of what do you say sister company of the sister association of the city manager association where we have very close links between the profession and the academic world in the sense we have an academic advisory board with people from Denmark and the other Nordic countries We have done a number of research projects that were not planned in the beginning but came up as a result of, of the international project. Some of us, I guess, have been hired as consultants or work as advisors for lo different local governments. And then a very important side effect of this is the teaching, how our teaching has been has been uh, changed as a result of this international comparative research project. I use particularly all the uh, results, the perspectives I gained from this project in our MPM program where I teach the introductory course in uh, political science and public administration. It's very heavily, uh, very heavily influenced by this project. I get back to the follow-up. We worked for a couple of years in very close cooperation with the UDIDA uh, board and some of their most active members, uh, the, the, the Brits, the Danes, actually the Dutch association were involved also. Uh, trying to uh, set up a seminar for city managers more a, more speci a, a seminar that was more specifically focused on on uh, relations between politicians and administrators and that is the largest fiasco I have ever been involved in we sent out many thousands folders inviting them to this conference four-day conference June in Denmark that may be, have been a problem maybe uh, we tried in, it in 2001, we got uh, three applicants and we thought the timing was wrong so we did it again in 2002, we got one applicant, one Dane and uh, I'm never going to do anything like this anymore <laughs> uh, it's, it's really a very simple analysis now when you look back which I think may be generalized Um, and which I think should be food for thought for this uh, this working group. It's it's very simple. The higher up in the hierarchy, uh, 
the more resources you have for stuff like this, and the less country dependent you are, in the sense that there is really something to gain from international seminars, studies, cooperation, relationships, etc., etc. And of course, highest up in the hierarchy is the city manager. But also, the less time you have for stuff like this. The lower in the hierarchy, the more time you have, but the, the more context dependent is the, um, is the work situation. For instance, when should we or could we offer uh, administrators at hospitals with a medical background, could we offer them something in this network? I don't think so, because what they need is so context dependent, it's so dependent on this, if we talk about Danish doctors, hospital administrators, so dependent on the Danish context. Maybe there is something we can offer them, but we compete with other activities that take place in Denmark, and we always, when we talk about doctors or nurses, etc., I think we will lose. So, that's my conclusion. International activities competing with national activities are bound to lose. That's the, the main hypothesis. But there is a qualifier here. It depends slightly on form, content, target group, and timing. <laughs> then I haven't said too much, haven't I? have I? <laughs> two ideas came up when I wrote this. And that's my last slide. First one is really a combination of the two target groups. Because I think, but I'm not sure I'm right here. I think uh, if you take people from the national administration working with intergovernmental relations, they have completely different outlooks, different needs than people, typically younger people working in regional and local government. And they, this is quite a large group we're talking about. Many, many regions in Europe, counties, uh, regions, whatever you call them, plus many, many big cities that have uh, international offices or EU offices. And maybe there is something, maybe this is a target group, so if it is done content-wise uh, in terms of form, in terms of timing, done correctly, I think there may be something to work with here. The other one is really a, an indirect way to reach local government officials. And that would be to take, and I don't know if, to what extent that exists in other countries, it would be to take the uh, students we have, mid-career students, we have at our MPA programs, MPP, MPA, MPM, whatever they, they are called, these programs, arrange summer schools for them. Two weeks, three weeks summer schools, uh, where they get to meet each other. Uh, where there is a, a uh, theme of the summer school, of course, you bring in the best people in the world, uh, and I think there may be something to offer here. You, you may even offer this also for American MPM students, MPA students. These are the only two target groups I came up with that well, I think there is something to work with, but I may be uh, I may be too pessimistic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. At the start of this morning, I felt a bit like uh, there was some cruise or uh, not on the on an island alone but in front of a foreign world of uh, academics. But after I listened to uh, Professor Mauritsens, I realized that there was a second Robertson Crusoe on that island because the message you brought from your point of view of uh, scientists is not so different from mine as a practitioner. And putting my uh, notes uh, together before yesterday, uh, I felt on, on the sentence 
uh, I once found in a text of uh, Einstein who said, unless we learn from the past, we will be condemned to repeat it. So if you ask, do, I need, do we need network, transnational networks, the answer is certainly yes, uh, because we can profit in networks from the experiences of others, the reflection of others on the past, and transnational, because uh, it's, uh, the slogan is uh, meanwhile uh, proven right, uh, that world has become that global village, what's uh, uh, happening elsewhere has an impact very fast on our uh, situation, and so we have uh, advantage learning about what's happening elsewhere, what their reactions were, were and what the, the results were. So, uh, but also what uh, it's right, and here I will uh, come in line with what Professor Morrison said, but from another point of view, there are circumstances under which a network can work more efficient or less efficient. And I should like to share my experiences as a practitioner uh, in some networks, mostly uh, uh, intergovernmental. I don't pretend they are representative and I don't pretend they are correct. I give them as I uh, experience them. I am in an academic world, so please take into account that I was in those networks uh, there as a, a civil servant. That means generally in a hurry, uh, eager to have uh, fast results to solve my problems and especially at the end of the budgetary year to explain uh, that the investment in the network was uh, positive. I recognize that at certain moments probably I was too pragmatic, uh, too action-oriented and too short-term oriented, but I believe that uh, that is also the administrative reality and the actual uh, evolution to greater cost consciousness, the introduction of mandate systems, uh, contract management uh, will probably not make it easier and make the time horizon smaller instead of broader. The networks, to give you the background, the networks uh, I experienced most were intergovernmental. It was the meeting of Director Generals of the Civil Service of the EU countries and the candidate member states, a network of uh, directors of uh, national schools, a network of people responsible for uh, senior civil servants that's meeting now next week in uh, Madrid, and then on a more, uh, more uh, global scale, uh, IASIA, the International Association of Schools and uh, Institutes of Administration, IES and Puma. Most of those networks, and there I find again uh, some uh, similar uh, phenomena in, the, uh, in what Professor Moritzen said, most of those networks started in the beginning rather small, were mostly originated from the west or the south of Europe or Scandinavia, and they grew in number and extent gradually. They started in the beginning mostly homogeneous, they became very heterogeneous from the viewpoint of professional experience and professional background of the participants. And I can say that in general, as the number of participants and the heterogeneity grew, my frustration grew also. And I will explain you uh, that in some words. So the first and main lesson I learned, and there I find back one of your slides, if you want a successful network, giving access to information and experience useful for vocational training and in daily management, you have to create a win-win context. A win context for the academic, but also a win context for the civil servant. And what I saw in those uh, net uh, networks, for the scientist often the win situation was a situation in which you could gain expertise uh, in a specific field by the opportunity of action learning in the real civil service world, not a virtual world. I found that recently everything has to be virtual, but for research sometimes, uh, research in the real world, not a virtual world, not an oversimplified world, can be more interesting. With civil servants that were not there as passive uh, uh, objects uh, or subjects filling in, uh, once again, one of those uh, very long questionnaires uh, often too abstract for them, and working with them uh, rather uh, as active players. One of the, one of the uh, plus points uh, for academics was also in those uh, positive uh, experiences, 
that they got access to a new market. They got new interest clients among the practitioners. They became more valuable and, uh, as consultant and as advisors. And I believe that in this room, in the Belgian situation, we have a very good uh, example of that. That's Professor Jan Boekhardt, who became a very uh, valuable consultant. I hope he will stay objective and not, uh, <coughs> not be the, uh, the victim of the uh, uh, theory of Festinger on uh, dissonance, that you will stay objective. And then I believe that the public will also be a winning party in that uh, transnational networks. They will uh, get new players, new aids to evaluate uh, public policy, and they can trust those academics more than civ uh, politicians, more than civil servants, and more than journalists. That can be also another aspect. So what was very positive generally when the results were positive, uh, positive in those networks, that was that if the project responded to my, my needs, uh, my needs, my daily needs. And uh, I believe that most of us are becoming more and more Keynesians, that we believe that in the long run we will do all, all that. So research and networks that will give results within eight, nine years after my mandate has expired. Perhaps I can be altruistic and say you have to do that, but personally I prefer it on a short term. Uh, what was the win situation, the positive uh, arguments in favor of transnational networks as a practitioner? First, we have uh, diverse and uh, multiple experiences, but we have generally difficulties <coughs> to put those experiences in a coherent and integrated model. And sharing experience, that famous learning organization, asks at least that you have a logical system in which those experiences can be put so that others can find what is interesting for them. And I recognize we are too often driven by a, a battle for budgetary and human beings, by constant uh, time pressure, even uh, the battle for survival, and generally uh, we take too few time uh, to broaden that horizon. And a network uh, for us, uh, and there I can testimony, uh, a network is very interesting for the practitioner to broaden its horizon in a minimum of time and a minimum uh, of cost, or at least at low cost. But there were some critical success factors in those trans in transnational networks. Uh, there are two categories. Uh, you have first the category of the subject called the objective of the network, and then you have the category of uh, the players. When the approach was multidisciplinary, that was a positive point. But I also re realized that that's not evident, even not at the university. And I wonder if pressure is going on uh, on you uh, to uh, uh, generate your own financial means, that that will not become an handicap, because then you have to share the means. For us, it has also an advantage that you probably more easily accept short-term projects in instead of uh, long-term projects. If the objectives and the teams were sufficient specific in content as well as in extent, that was also uh, an advantage. And I am a bit afraid of those large uh, networks, I have very bad experiences, too general, where they produce reports full of evidences and no professional is spending much time in reading such uh, reports or networks. The more specific the objective, the greater the probability it will get the interest of the practitioners and that they will see the link with uh, their daily problems, their main challenges. And if they see that link with the reality, uh, it's also more evident that probably, as you said afterwards, uh, once the project finished, they will find the means to get it updated. Generally, our argument is we don't have the budget. But if it's really interesting, don't estimate the creativeness, the creativeness of civil servants mm -hmm. finding the means. But then we have to also be winning part, uh, partners in that uh, situation. Uh, when it's too broad, uh, too many uh, participants, for me it was often a serious handicap and I got sometimes the feeling I was members of a team building uh, the Tower of Babylon. And uh, that's the main uh, problem in a lot of global networks, 
where the extent is so huge that you get reports with very, very general trends. And then I felt like someone who is drowning in a pond with an average depth of five centimeters. So the uh, voluntary limitation uh, makes uh, a network for us more attractive. The uh, time horizon is more limited. And the best experience I had, and then I find I uh, found back an experience, your approach, that's when the research is done in concentric circles, started on a limited basis and then extended afterwards. But from the beginning, with the clear final objective, uh, clear and known, that the best results uh, were realized. Uh, what are the teams? Well, I'm not uh, giving you uh, the teams, but if you take uh, that publication uh, series of the Institute uh, van de Overheid of Leuven called Overheidsmanagement, you have an excellent example of the teams in which practitioners are interested. And I can say as a practitioner that probably a series I consulted most, and I believe that my colleagues also do it, because when you read it, you can find uh, practical elements in it, helping you solving your uh, own uh, challenges. And then you have the second category that were the, the players. My most positive uh, experience was in networks, or uh, sometimes sub-networks, where the number of participants was limited, but with the maximum of diversity. And that's not <coughs> a contradiction. You can have, a, you can have a, num a limited number of participants, but each participant representing a maximum of diversity. People who are economists, but who study psychology, mixed careers and things like that. So you don't have the complication of, of too many participants, but you have nevertheless uh, the uh, contradiction. And what I saw, that is that the motivation and the satisfaction of participants is in direct uh, relation to the opportunities they have to intervene in the project. I say opportunity, that's not the number of interventions, but the opportunity at least to intervene. And when the group is becoming too big, you have a formalism. You have window dressing and you have an inherent loss of time. And sometimes, and because I am at the end of my career and it's taken on video, but I can be honest, when I look back on my past and sometimes, to be honest, I say to myself, if everyone is telling the truth the same way I am telling the truth on what's happening in Belgium, what can I trust of it? Because generally in those small formal uh, networks, when they are too big, too formal, you are telling a story how it is planned, how it is safe to be, but not how it really uh, was. And in small uh, informal networks you can ask your colleague, well, I saw an interesting report on the Netherlands on performance pay. Uh, it works. Then you say, no, it's a publication, but in reality it doesn't work. <laughs> and that's interesting for practitioners. And that you have, you have only have it in smaller networks or if you work with uh, uh, limited networks. It's also, uh, to my opinion, uh, a possibility to avoid the major handicap of large networks and large congresses. Sometimes sitting in those uh, global uh, conferences, I am wondering, are people coming are they writing a, 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 a text to come to the conference? They come to the conference because they have an interesting text. That's the danger of two global networks. So to keep it short and to stick to my 50 minutes, uh, as conclusion I should say transnational networks, certainly yes, but especially if the things are chosen well in uh, reciprocal uh, consultation and please not too broad in extent in the beginning. But afterwards, if you want, you want to disseminate the, the, the results, it's different. If you ask me mixed players, I should say yes, but again, selective criteria to accept members and to accept uh, contributions. And uh, because uh, Mercedes asked also, uh, what do you think about uh, the possible end products of those uh, uh, networks, they can be very uh, diverse. Uh, well, it's already gave some, some, some examples. It can be very readable reports like the uh, series uh, of uh, the Institute of Leuven in overage management. It can be lists of uh, resource persons. It can be websites with links. It can be e-communities more and more. 
But there again, a final remark. Uh, these end products generally ask also a continuous logistical uh, support. That means also budget. And nothing is more discouraging than consulting a database that is outdated. Thank you very much, all the speakers. And now, uh, do you have any questions? We would like to have your opinions, uh, questions. Uh, what do you think about the possibilities to destroy it? The problem we already know some of them. I just have a question to the three inputs or uh, the four I should say. What about trade unions? You talk about professional organizations like the city managers, these are professional organizations. What about trade unions? I mean they are they should be a key Matching partners, shouldn't they? Or shouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I completely agree. Did uh, you mention? Pardon? Did you mention? No, no, oh. I didn't mention. I think that I have an experience working with the same because we did uh, something like a three years of the union leaders to live directly with the public administration leaders because our trade union were not very professional, so they don't know how to deal with the problems of negotiating in the whole manner. So um, but I suppose this Specifically, I have experience because I will learn from that. 
but then it must be specific and in direction must be possible. Not in those, uh, in all those uh, conferences, uh, I even the uh, other side. Um, so I agree with you that we, when we talk about this local government official, it works with the intergovernmental relations. We should have a, a broad view uh, and think about them as people working in what you would call in international offices of, of cities and regions, working with people but also working with all other aspects of, of this country. And that's what I think at the moment. And I think that this the common there are a lot of common things that could be developed for this group of people to Spain, Italy, Norway, etc. So I think I mean by
Coming on this history uh, of master studies, uh, our Indian drug program has made up for it to be study abroad and uh, And so our students, they would organize this by themselves. They would find a place in the university, a place in Norway, Australia, and then to and that seems to be uh, easy for them. When I was thinking about it, some people have thought of this as an alternative to, uh, to these features, which I think many of them would choose, provided that uh, it was a sensible, attractive program that would uh, focus on some uh, current relevant aspect of public education. Number of and I think many of them would actually get them.
you can fill in the question that I have with no thought, but uh, it's maybe can come up with the last part, concerning with transnational networks, so maybe you can give also some more ideas. Thank you very much. Really